Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. With Eternal Masters out and everyone taking out mortgages to draft the set, I thought I'd help you out as best I can. In this video, we're going to talk about the best commons and uncommons to draft in Eternal Masters. We'll go a little bit into archetypes at the end of the video, but the majority of the video is designed to help you know which commons and uncommons are best in case your rare is absolute garbanzo beans for limited play. I've done a lot of testing for this, so hopefully it helps you out. Just enjoy. Now remember, while there are plenty of great cards for Draft and Eternal Masters, this video is about showing you the best commons and uncommons in each color. So if we miss a card, we didn't miss it. It's just not as universally powerful as the ones we've mentioned. Let's begin with white commons. This is going to be a recurring theme, but removal is king. Pacifism is pretty close to straight up removal. Creatures can't attack or block, only two mana, easy enough. If you're stuck looking at a pack without a decent rare or uncommon, pacifism is perfectly fine. Along similar lines, but slightly less effective, Core Hookmaster is the next best white common. While it isn't an unsummon, it does keep the opposing creature tapped down for a turn. Could help you get in a few points of damage or prevent the creature from beating your face in. May not seem that flashy, but it's very good. There are other quality white commons like Elite Vanguard and Mistral Charger, but the Hookmaster is definitely better. Honorable mention for Rally the Peasants, by the way. If you're in white-red, you want this card early and often. It's such a house with flashback. Absolutely devastating for your opponent. Pick them up. As for white and commons, there are so many options. The rarity is pretty deep, but it's clear that Swords to Plowshares and Faith's Fetters are simply the best. Sarah Angel and Calciderm are fantastic beaters. Wall of Omens is a decent two-for-one. Field of Souls is great in certain decks. But Swords to Plowshares and Face Fetters are the bee's knees of removal. One of them is super cheap and instant speed. The other gains you life and locks down a creature for good. Even their non-mana abilities. So strong. Definitely the best white uncommons. Do not be afraid to first pick. Moving on to blue commons, you're about to see a bit of a theme. The first blue common you should be paying attention to, Silent Departure. It may look like a puny on summon effect, but that flashback ability makes it tier 1 awesome. Back in original Innistrad, this card was easily first pickable and limited. Being able to unsummon early and then do it again later in the game when the creatures are way more impactful, yeah, you'll take it. It's a very good card, the best common as far as I'm concerned. The next best blue common is Manowar, another unsummon effect, but this time you get a 2-2 out of the deal. Not too shabby, especially when you just time walked your opponent, forcing them to play their threat over again. You gain board presence, they lose tempo, Manowar is everything you want in a common creature. I was going to talk to you about all the amazing blue uncommons, because there are a lot of great blue uncommons, but I'm only going to talk to you about one, Phyrexian and Jester. This rare turned uncommon is the dream you've all been waiting for. Seven mana for a behemoth of a creature after you use your nice little removal ability on something monstrous. The Ingester not only exiles the creature, but makes itself huge. The Ingester being rare shifted down is clearly a sign they want Reanimator to be a thing. Be happy about this. The Ingester is great in every blue deck you could possibly make. Removal and a big butt. This thing is crazy. Time to talk black. Eye Blight's ending is probably the best black common. Instant speed, 3 mana isn't terrible, destroys any non-elf creature. Sure there is going to be an elf player in your pod, maybe even two, but that doesn't mean this isn't a great card. It's still a solid removal spell with a very specific condition, it's worth playing for sure. The next best black common is Tragic Slip. While you may think Morbid is annoying and will be difficult to trigger, you would not be correct. This format is full of death, just so much death. Many archetypes hinge on attacking, sacrificing, bringing stuff back. There's a lot of death in the format. Morbid will be a piece of cake to trigger. Tragic Slip is great stuff. Quality black uncommons are incredibly deep, like outrageously deep. There's definitely some contention about this, but I strongly believe him to Turok and Necrotal are the two best black uncommons. Based on my own experience and the experiences of many others, these two cards stand above the rest more often than not. Him is straight up a two for one and your opponent doesn't even get to decide what to keep, all random, that's pure card advantage. Necrotal is a removal spell attached to a two power creature with first strike. Kill one of their creatures and get one of your own with a relevant combat mechanic, seems good. Both of these cards are dangerous to play against and amazing to play with. If you go beyond those two, there are other amazing black uncommons. Anime dead in the right deck is just an auto win. Blood artist, same thing. Pair that with carrion feeder and some token producers, brutal. Then you have victimize. 
Sacrificing any creature to bring back two of your own, that's a lot of value, way better than you might think. Don't let Victimize go too late in your packs, that card's crazy strong. Moving right along to red commons, we have another deep color and rarity. Firebolt is probably the best red common. Being able to deal 2 damage now and 2 damage later is really nice, especially when you need to clear an early attacker or a blocker and then finish something off later in the game. Flashback always makes a card better. This one's no exception. The other red common I really like is Carbonize. It is a removal spell, so obviously I like it, but being instant speed is a huge help along with the clause that the creature is exiled rather than put into the graveyard. There are reanimation and threshold shenanigans we're going to talk about in a little bit, and Carbonize does great work against those. For the record, other interesting red commons. Mog War Marshal, Mog Fanatic, Desperate Ravings, Wildfire Emissary. I don't want you to first pick these cards if you can avoid it, but if you can't, there are worse options. Red Uncommons might be my favorite color and rarity in the entire set, and that's saying a lot because I hate Burn and Goblins. Chain Lightning is the best red uncommon. One mana, three damage. No, I don't care that they can copy it. That doesn't mean anything to me. We're talking one mana for three damage. You'll take it and you'll like it. Anywho, the next best red uncommon is... Actually, I'm not sure. I'm a bit torn between Beetleback Chief and Gitu Slinger. One of them creates a goblin party. The other is a removal spell attached to a creature. Echo does suck, but again, removal is king. This is a tough choice. I think they're very close, honestly. Beetleback may get the edge, but yeah, very close here. Both are great. Finally, we make it to green. Green commons are absolutely fantastic, beyond amazing, slam dunks all around. Lanowar Elf, Werebear, Civic Wayfinder, Elephant Guide, all of these are fantastic cards worthy of early picks. Whether you need mana ramp, mana fixing, or a giant ghost elephant, these cards got your back. Seriously, it's great stuff. I can't say enough about the green commons this time around. They even have Roots and Sylvan Might, both awesome. There just isn't enough time to talk about how good green commons are. Seriously, they're very impressive. Green uncommons, similar story. My favorite green uncommon is Roar of the Worm, easily. Seven mana for a six six worm is eh, but if you can get it into the yard, four mana for a six six worm, that's just crazy value and limited. Honestly, the seven mana six six isn't even that bad. War of the Worm is a huge beating, ridiculous. I'll first pick this probably more than most. Next up, we have Harmonize. Card draw in green is always rare, always. Harmonize is about as straightforward as the color gets. Four mana, three cards. Great for a color that burns through its hand relatively quickly. Just a solid card draw spell for the color. I do want to make an honorable mention for Rancor, but only if you have a deck that's remotely aggressive. If you do stick Rancor on anything and it becomes an auto threat. Opponents hate Rancor. They hate it. It's honestly the worst. Enjoy pissing everyone off. Just forever. One last note on Green Uncommons. The rarity has an absurd amount of specialty cards. Brawn for graveyard decks, Centaur Chieftain for threshold strategies, Ancestral Mask for the enchantment deck, Flinthoof Boar for the inevitable red green deck. And not only Wirewood Symbiote, but also Timberwatch Elf for the Elves deck. No other color and rarity brings as much specialization to the table as this one. Green is really on fire in this set. Think the exact opposite of Battle for Zendikar Limited and you're right on the money, which is also green. Totally planned. You get my point. Now that we've covered the universally best commons and uncommons, let me quickly show you the best commons and uncommons for different archetypes in Eternal Masters Limited. We'll begin with blue-white flyers. This one is pretty self-explanatory. You have your staples like Avon Rift Watcher, Mistral Charger, Squadron Hawk, and Phantom Monster. Make sure you get enough of these to make the following cards worth it. These are your real heavy hitters in the archetype. Soul Catcher, Sarah Angel, Warden of Evos Isle, Thunderclap Wyvern. Add in some of the previously mentioned good blue and white cards and you have a deck that's difficult to deal with. Next up is White-Black Triggers. This is a bit trickier to build. You want creatures with triggers like Core Hookmaster, White Mane Lion, Wake Dancer, and Phyrexian Rager. These are the core blink effects in the deck. Make sure to pick up powerhouse cards like Necrotal, Glimmer Point, Stag, and Calciderm. Calciderm works really well with White Mane Lion in particular because the lion doesn't target. Helps keep that vanishing business from killing your beastie. This archetype is a bit loose, but it is there. Basically white-black good stuff to be honest. Zealous Persecution is your reward for playing the deck. 
Blue Black Reanimator is practically made for you. All stars like Murful Gluter, Phyrexian Ingester, and Animate Dead lead the Undead Charge. Your deck basically functions like a control deck, except you bring stuff back from the yard, so you're going to want to fill the rest of your deck with Phyrexian Ragers, Plague Witches, Knight's Whispers, Counterspell, stuff like that. Instead of calling this Reanimator, it really should just be Blue Black Control with Reanimation Shenanigans. Other great cards for the deck, Deep Analysis for the flashback value, and Giant Tortoise to help you, you know, not die. Extract from Darkness is your crazy multicolored card. This next deck is one of my favorites, Blue-Red Flashback featuring Burning Vengeance or Young Pyromancer, preferably both. The set is full of flashback and retrace spells, both abilities that trigger the vengeance. Casting cards from the yard like Deep Analysis, Dream Twist, Silent Departure, Desperate Ravings. Think of all the value you could generate. Seriously, the list of flashback cards is ridiculous. Faithless Looting, Firebolt, it's crazy. For this deck to function properly, you are going to need Burning Vengeance or Young Pyromancer. Without either of those, your deck really isn't going anywhere. Weed Dragonauts is great, but you're going to need something else. Definitely view getting a Pyromancer or a Vengeance as a signal to move in. Blue-green threshold slash self mill is a really interesting strategy. Your goal is to loot as much as humanly possible, like you want to loot a lot. Remember, threshold requires you to have 7 cards in your graveyard before anything awesome happens. So you're going to want to do that quickly. Screeching Scab, Commune with the Gods, Dream Twist, all of these are commons and easy ways to fill your yard. Once you do that, you have heavy hitters like Nimble Mongoose, Centaur Chieftain, Werebear, and Cephalid Sage. The faster you mill yourself, the more backbreaking their abilities will be. Utilize strong flashback spells like War of the Worm and Sylvan Might for additional value from the yard, and you have a pretty sweet deck. Just make sure you actually get the win conditions. You need those threshold cards. Trigon Predator is your blue-green reward for playing the deck. Black-red tokens is a crazy strategy. Might as well be called deck that throws goblins at stuff. Get every token producer you can find. Beat a back chief, Mog War Marshal, pair those up with Carrion Feeder and Blood Artist, and boom. You have a disturbingly fast and powerful black red deck. Get some nice morbid value out of your tragic slips and wake dancers too. Ugh, oh, so good. For this deck, you get Torn of Souls as your multicolored and common reward. Probably the most straightforward strategy, black green elves is definitely a thing, practically made for you. Lanoir Elves, Lissalana Huntmaster, Blight Soil Druid, the newly common Elvish Vanguard. They're basically shoving elves down your throats. If you see a bunch of elves, take them. Your big hitters are Shaman of the Pack, Timberwatch Elf, and Lissalana Scarblade. Crazy strong if you have enough elves. Next up is Red Green Aggro. Again, pretty simple stuff. Curd Ape and Flint Hoof Boar are the slam dunk inclusions. Gives you a nice boost to their stats if you have diversifying lands. Beyond that, you're going to want to find all the aggressive red-green creatures you can. Keldon Marauders, Fervent Cathar, Emperor Crocodile, add in the big guns like Rancor, Bloodbraid Elf, a bunch of Avarax, hopefully, and you have a pretty sweet aggro deck. You also have access to Sylvan Might and Reckless Charge. Don't forget to pick those up too, they're great for ending games. Red-white tokens is basically the red token generators we talked about before. Add in the white good stuff like Raise the Alarm, Elite, Vanguard, Ballynock Cohort, and Core Hookmaster. Then all you have to do is top it all off with the crazy rewards like Rally the Peasants, Intangible Virtue, Beetleback Chief, and Flame Kinzelet. The deck runs reasonably well, but trust me, you're going to want Rally the Peasants. That is a game ender all on its own, one of the best reasons to play the deck hands down. The last archetype we're covering in this video is Green-White Enchantress. This is another archetype that is very clearly built for this limited format. Yavi Maya Enchantress, Mesa Enchantress, Ancestral Mask, Monk Idealist. These are all pretty much necessary for your deck to function if you're going the enchantment route. Luckily, Eternal Masters is full of great enchant cards to help you out. Field of Souls is nice to have, even if this isn't the primary archetype for it. Abundant Growth, Elephant Guide, Seal of Strength, Rancor, all playable enchantments in your deck. Make sure to grab an enchantress or two early. If you don't, you may not get the payoff you need to make the deck worth it. Just something to think about. Wow, this video is really long. If you made it this far, be sure to leave a little smiley face in the comments section. We did it together. Remember, this was a really fast overview of Eternal Masters archetypes and a summary of the best uncommons and commons in the entire set. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. There are plenty of playable cards we didn't mention, but we really wanted to focus on the best cards. 
Hope it helped you out. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manosaurus. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. We're in the middle of so much Eternal Masters hype. If you want in on the hype, you can grab a few staples right now on the cheap. Green Sun Zine, this is already down to $3.50. That's so cheap for the ridiculously powerful Eternal card. Honestly, that's stupid cheap. Not impressed yet? Heritage Druid, the Elf staple, $5.50. Come on, you have to admit that's really cheap. Just if you want them, click the links, help the channel. It's a win-win.